Greetings all and happy April. I'm Claudia Polsky and I direct the Environmental Law Clinic. I'm delighted today to have the opportunity to kick off this information session by telling you about Berkeley Law's already terrific and ever expanding clinical program offerings. The poet T.S. Eliot wrote that April is the cruelest month because of the way the early spring mixes memory and desire. It stirs a longing in us for awakening before winter is fully ready to yield. And I think that's a rather nice explanation of why you should take a clinic at your earliest opportunity uh, to experience an awakening, awakening to the possibilities of justice, even as large lecture classes may have made you feel that the long winter of learning case law and legal doctrine would never abate. Joining a clinic is also a way to exponentially improve your legal practice skills as you learn from experienced attorneys who are also subject matter experts. So to quote my colleague, Laurel Fletcher, I'm from the Environmental Law Clinic and we like recycled content. You can come for the justice and stay for the skills or you can come for the skills and stay for the justice. But either way, you have to apply to a clinic. And so today I'll give you a short overview of the organization of our clinical program and its mechanics, some information about how to apply and a sketch of each clinic. We'll also have time to answer general questions. I want to thank very much our interim clinical program administrator, Olivia Layug Balbarin, and our uh, program administrator, Jasmine Sozi, whose uh, title I just stated incorrectly, our office administrator, Jasmine Sozi, who have helped organize us for today and who will be able to answer most of your questions in the chat function as we go. If there are any clinic specific questions you have, you can save those for the breakout sessions afterwards. Links for the breakout sessions will be in the chat and should have been provided previously. And you can feel free to hop among them if you'd like to explore more than one clinic. The clinic program mission is to advance racial, social, environmental, and economic justice through the law's three-pronged mission of teaching, service, and research. Our clinics teach you how to address pressing social problems and become a skilled, responsible, and above all, reflective legal practitioner. And we do this by having you perform in role as a legal advocate for real clients with our clinic attorneys acting as your coaches and also as your safety net. Our service comes in the form of provision of first-rate legal service to underrepresented individuals, marginalized communities and public-minded organizations locally, statewide, nationally, and globally. In clinics, you'll also have the opportunity to produce cutting edge interdisciplinary research to support litigation, inform public policy, and increase the effectiveness of our teaching and service. And these are the covers of just a few of the many reports issued by our clinics that have had significant policy impacts. We have six in-house clinics, meaning ones right here physically at Berkeley Law. And we also have eight community-based clinics that are housed at the East Bay Community Law Center down on University Avenue, a short walk from campus. In the fall, we are expecting all of our clinics to operate in person. So if you plan to enroll in a clinic for the fall, you should definitely plan to be in residence in the Berkeley area. Um, like everything in these times, uh, this prediction is conditional. The Hayward fault could shake, uh, the uh, new virus variant could emerge, there could be a nuclear war. But as far as we can tell, we will be in person in the fall. Why should you take a clinic? Uh, clinic is where you get hands-on lawyering experience with high quality supervision. You serve unmet legal needs in our community. You learn how to learn from your own experience, your successes and your failures. You're very likely be able to satisfy your writing requirement if you talk to your clinic instructors in advance and make sure you're working on a project that enables that. You'll build your network in the community. You'll build your resume. And above all, I really hope you will feel joy. I think you will find in the staff 
and directors of the clinics, people who have had really high satisfaction practicing as lawyers. That's not a common theme when people talk about legal practice, but I hope that we can all communicate to you in our different ways why this profession has made us feel so fulfilled and help you craft a path that will produce joy as well as good legal outputs. In terms of the mechanics of the clinic, first time students enroll for six credits, two units for a seminar that accompanies your clinic project, and then four units in a clinic. So this is about 16 hours per week in the clinic, about eight hours a week in the seminar. It's a lot of time and that's necessary to perform these projects well. The classroom, the, the credits count as classroom credits, meaning they do not count against your 15 unit limit for non-classroom curriculum. Uh, you do not need to enroll in phase one registration. You can enroll later. LLMs, they only enroll by permission of the instructor. And some clinics may require or prefer state bar certification. For others, this may not be relevant at all. Excuse me one second as I struggle with my PowerPoint here. Okay, how to apply. You have one week to apply to clinics. Your applications are due next Monday, April 11th at noon. It's a common application for the clinics. There's a general section requiring resume and then there are detailed sections for each clinic which have chosen their own questions. Go through all the sections and very importantly, if you do not receive a confirmation email, know that your application has not been submitted. So persist until you get that confirmation email. We always get some traffic on this point. So make sure that you do in fact get the confirmation. There's an opportunity to rank order clinics by preference. Very often uh, students are interested in more than one clinic. And so this increases your chances of getting into a clinic and also thinking longer term, you should really think about structuring your time at Berkeley Law so you can participate in more than one clinic. Um, as Audrey Lord said, you know, we are not single issue people. We do not lead single issue lives. And if you're torn among many clinics because you have many interests and passions, uh, welcome to the club. Every time we do this session, I wish I could go back to law school and take every single clinic that will be described today. So really think about creating space to create more, to enroll in more than one clinic over time. And in student selection for the clinics, as in everything in our program, we're committed to being equitable, inclusive, and actively anti-racist in our learning and practice environment. And among other things, that means sort of operationalizing that sentiment is that we don't cream students based on their grades, based on how long their resume, different people come to different issues at different times. I know in our clinic, we often get people who said things like I never knew asthma was an environmental issue. I always thought that was a health issue. And so, you know, they may or may not have thought of themselves as environmentalists until they got here. So uh, there are many ways to participate in and add value to the clinic and to bring all of who you are to your work. I'll now briefly describe the individual clinics. The death penalty clinic involves students working under the supervision of professors Elizabeth Semmel and Ty Alper, paralegal Heather Canfield, and clinical supervising attorney Rajula Rahman. The Death Penalty Clinic is a litigation clinic that represents individuals facing the death penalty at trial, on appeal, and in post-conviction proceedings in state and federal court. Most of the clinic's cases are in the South where the need for skilled representation and resources is greatest. Currently, the Death Penalty Clinic represents clients in Alabama, Arizona, Kansas, Missouri, and California. Students investigate all aspects of a death penalty case in the field and in collaboration with expert witnesses. They draft complex pleadings that challenge the administration of the death penalty, including pleadings confronting race discrimination and prosecutorial misconduct. 
The clinic also challenges structural inequities in the administration of the death penalty and the broader criminal legal system, particularly those that reflect and perpetuate race discrimination. Please note that the death penalty clinic is a year long clinic. It does not accept new students in the spring semester. It is highly unlikely to accept any rising 2Ls for fall 2022 and encourages rising 2Ls to apply next year. Evidence and criminal procedure are prerequisites for rising 3Ls. The Environmental Law Clinic focuses on environmental justice and environmental health. In other words, the environmental issues that most directly affect people. We also work to promote a more diverse and inclusive environmental movement by creating coalitions and conversation spaces that bring mainstream environmentalists and technical experts into productive conversation with community-based environmental justice and health advocates who are experts in their own environmental conditions. We are a multi-tool clinic that litigates, drafts legislation, files administrative comments on regulations, and writes strategy memos and policy reports. We also do substantial affirmative media work to educate the public about our clients' important and often neglected causes. ELC projects have been featured on CBS News, National Public Radio, and The John Oliver Show, and starting next week will be featured in an HBO docuseries. Current ELC matters that will continue through fall include litigation to curb toxic air emissions from a polluting facility in East Oakland, legislative work to stop the discriminatory siting of unwanted land uses in BIPOC and low-income communities statewide, a policy project to ensure that Native nations have a seat at the table in California's planning for a just transition from fossil fuels, and a policy project examining equitable ways to finance the transition from dirty to clean energy sources. We'll also be investigating in the fall angles to address the harms of ongoing uranium mining and nuclear waste disposal on indigenous lands from the Great Lakes region to the Bering Strait, working with two indigenous led nonprofits. ELC is staffed by a director, that's me, and staff attorneys, Sabrina Ashjan, Steve Castleman, and Tony Cordero. The International Human Rights Law Clinic is a semester long clinic. It's committed to developing projects in partnership with local advocates and affected communities that employ victim center excuse me, victim-centered human rights strategies and address systemic racism and discrimination, neoliberalism, and other systems of oppression. IHRLC students work on litigation before national and international courts and monitoring bodies concerning human rights violations, engage in international policy work to promote human rights protections, and document human rights abuses. Students are supervised by co-directors, Professors Roxana Altos, Laurel Fletcher, and Clinical Teaching Fellow, Asta Sharma Pokharel. Clinic projects vary from semester to semester and involve partnerships with human rights advocacy groups in the US and abroad. Next semester, IHRLC students are likely to work on representing the family of a Mexican national beat to death by US border agents in litigation against the United States before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights advocating at the United Nations to end life sentences as a violation of human rights. International litigation and policy advocacy on behalf of human rights activists targeted by states through illegal surveillance, criminal prosecutions, and other methods of persecution. And investigating state complicity in a 2010 massacre of migrants in Mexico. The New Business Community Law Clinic is directed by Bill Kell and instructed also by Supervising Attorney Kelly Wolfock, Teaching Fellow Mariana Acevedo Nuevo, and Teaching Fellow Desiree Lafleur. Each year, NBCLC students provide free legal help to hundreds of low-income businesses that can't afford an attorney. NBCLC assists entrepreneurs in California's East Bay and the Central Valley providing services in English and Spanish. 
a majority of his clients are women and two thirds are entrepreneurs of color. Starting a business always involves risk, but starting without legal help creates needless risk. And even before the pandemic, about 50% of new businesses failed within five years, causing economic fallout for the families involved. While helping such families succeed, clinic students get real transactional practice experience in several capacities. As in-house counsel, where three student teams assist several entrepreneurs over the entire semester. During office hours, where students provide brief advice for clients who sign up on the web. Legal trainings, where students present regular webinars for entrepreneurs on recurring legal issues lay-friendly legal materials composed by students for NBCLC's extensive online library for entrepreneurs. The clinic partners with over a dozen community-based agencies throughout the Bay and the Central Valley. The Policy Advocacy Clinic is directed by Jeff Selbin, working with Deputy Directors Stephanie campos Bui and Devin Shea. Its teaching fellows are Ana Victoria Avila, Cameron Clark, Delaney Green, Yasmin Tager, Gus Tupper, Rachel Wallace, and Maya Zwirling. In the Policy Advocacy Clinic, teams of law and public policy students pursue non-litigation strategies to combat systemic racial and economic injustice. PAC's approach is informed by impacted people and accountable to community organizations. Clinic students provide research, advocacy, and technical assistance to state and local partners. Building on its successes in California, PAC's work is currently focused on a multi-year national campaign to abolish criminal fines and fees. Well, that's what that map you see in the middle is depicting, with a special emphasis on ending harm to youth in the juvenile system and their families. Next fall, the clinic may also pilot one or more abolition projects beyond fines and fees in both the criminal and civil legal systems. By participating in active abolition campaigns, students learn substantive skills, consult and interview clients and a wide range of stakeholders, conduct legal and social science research, and learn about the possibilities and limits of law and public policy advocacy. The Samuelson Law, Technology, and Public Policy Clinic works to advance the public interest in technology law. Technology is a pervasive part of daily life. Every time a new technological innovation changes the way we operate, when a GPS ankle bracelet is placed on a kid in the juvenile system, a police department decides whether to employ facial recognition technology, or schools and employers move online to the detriment of communities and people who may not have good internet access, it raises a public interest tech issue. The Samuelson Clinic works in four main areas, civil liberties, intellectual property, telecommunications, and criminal justice, to make sure that as technology advances, it's used to improve equity and protect and expand rights rather than to diminish them. The clinic litigates cases in federal courts nationwide, it advocates before regulatory agencies in Washington, DC, and it works with state and local policymakers. Moving down to University Avenue, the East Bay Community Law Center, EBCLC, is Berkeley Law's oldest and largest clinic. Executive Director Zoe Polk, Clinical Director Seema Patel, Clinical Program Coordinator Yelitsa Herrera, and 40 attorneys train more than 100 law students each year, including in a full-time summer program. EBCLC is the largest provider of free legal services in Alameda County and Berkeley Law's only community-based clinic. I just want to pause for a moment to emphasize that the largest provider of free legal services in Alameda County a county that contains 1.7 million people is our East Bay Community Law Center at Berkeley Law. That, that should make everyone very proud. 
EBCLC assists several thousand low-income clients annually using myriad strategies to address the underlying conditions of poverty and systemic racism. Clinic students undergo extensive training in racial justice, equity, and inclusion. There's a special note. Uh, I believe this is a note from for spring semester only. Uh, so I will not be telling you about that. I apologize for the miscue. Housing is one of the clinics at EBCLC. Its goal is to maintain safe and affordable housing. The robust housing team represents low-income tenants facing eviction and often at risk of homelessness in the Bay Area, one of the country's most rapidly gentrifying regions. It is a high volume, high stakes, high impact practice in which students will see civil procedure in action by working summary eviction defense cases. Students draft motions, handle discovery, engage in negotiations and mediations, and if they are certified, they take and defend depositions and argue motions in court. As a student in the housing clinic, you will likely engage in community lawyering and mobilization and work on key policy advocacy initiatives. In EBCLC's immigration clinic, EBCLC assists clients with assuming their rightful place in our community. This is a comprehensive immigration practice where students represent clients before the immigration court, USCIS, the asylum office, and probation court. You will prepare a wide variety of immigration applications, including claims for political asylum, U visas, special immigrant juvenile status, green card applications, DACA, and, criminal, and deal with criminal immigration issues. In EBCLC's health and welfare clinic, you will assist clients in overcoming barriers to health care and related services. This practice focuses on medical legal partnerships. It serves people living with HIV and AIDS and medically vulnerable children and adults. Students collaborate with medical providers, attend pediatric case rounds at the county hospital, and frequently work with other EBCLC units to address intersecting social factors that lead to poor health outcomes, such as unstable housing. Students will develop litigation skills representing clients in social security and other administrative hearings, analyzing medical records, writing pre-hearing briefs, conducting direct and cross-examination of witnesses, and fielding and responding to judges' myriad questions. As a student in this clinic, you'll develop critical negotiation skills by working with county officials to settle public benefits cases and working with landlords to resolve poor housing conditions that impact health. And here I'll just say parenthetically that 99% of all civil cases settle. You don't learn a lot about negotiation and settlement in law school and EBCLC is a wonderful place to get some of that very, very practical experience. In the Consumer Justice Clinic, students represent clients facing debt collection, credit reporting, and access to credit issues, student loans, car fraud, and other predatory business practices and scams, including those particular to immigrant communities. Students will develop traditional litigation skills from intake to trial, and will have to exercise non-lawyering skills to get results, like creative letter writing, political lobbying and organizing, finding solutions outside the court system, working with various units of government to punish bad actors, and bringing media exposure to enact necessary reforms. If you wanna use your creativity and energy to help the public in an un inherently unfair economic system, the Consumer Justice Clinic is for you. In EBCLC's Education, Defense, and Justice for Youth practice, EGI, which comprises two clinics, you will either advocate for youth of color who are being pushed out of their schools, the Education Justice Clinic, or you will defend youth of color in criminal court, the Youth Defender Clinic. Working together, these two clinics fight the criminalization of youth of color and the phenomenon of school pushout. YDC students provide holistic criminal defense to youth in delinquency and record sealing proceedings 
while EJC students advocate for students of color with disabilities in special education proceedings, including individualized education plan meetings and administrative hearings, as well as in juvenile court. Students in both clinics represent youth in expulsion hearings and will likely engage in policy advocacy. Again, both EJC and YDC, oh, I apologize, this is a note regarding spring semester, and these clinics will be accepting new applications for the fall. Last, EBCLC's Community Economic Justice Clinic applies a racial justice and anti-displacement lens to assist sustainable worker-owned businesses and housing opportunities to low-income neighborhoods. CAG is uniquely positioned as a transactional community-centered law clinic, providing legal support to local folks that seek to create and preserve businesses and nonprofits rooted in low-income communities of color. You will engage in a full range of transactional and policy advo advocacy work at CEJ, including formal legal, forming legal entities, drafting contracts, researching and developing affordable housing and land policies, speaking at city council meetings, working with community groups and coalitions, and conducting workshops in the community. In a moment, it will be time to break out into clinics. I am just going to stop my screen share in a moment so that I can make sure there are no unanswered questions in the chat. I wanna reiterate that applications are due by noon on Monday, April 11th. And I wanna say that for all of the different subject matter these clinics cover and all of the diverse teaching and practice styles of the attorneys who will be your instructors, they have an awful lot in common. And one thing I hope you will get no matter what clinic you enroll in is a real sense of agency that we hope can meet your sense of urgency to fix so many broken things in our world. We really want to make you feel capable of addressing the challenges before us. So with that, let me stop sharing the screen and then we will go to uh, Q&A and then breakout rooms. Okay, I see that in our, ch our chat we have links and then there are some answers to Q&A being typed and I will quickly try to answer some of these others live. So this is a great question that's really about sequencing. So thank you for asking it. And the question is, can you speak to the utility of participating in a clinic versus a public interest field placement or internship since we can't do them at the same time? Absolutely. I have spoken at length with Sue Schechter, our director of fields placements about this question. And we are in complete agreement that it is a good idea to do a clinic before a fields placement if your schedule can accommodate that. The reason is that clinics provide more intensive supervision and in particular, a lot of feedback on your writing. And that will make you a much higher functioning and better regarded extern when you leave the building and are trying to expand your professional network and get great recommendations and create a wonderful impression and so forth. So clinic is really a great skill development environment and the ideal progression is take some doctrinal classes, take a clinic, think about an externship for later. There is a question for DPC here about whether rising three alls are highly preferred. I will let that get asked in the DPC section. Another question that does pertain to everyone is the clinic the same amount of credit hours for every clinic? Yes. In ranking clinic, preferences on the application, how should we rank more than one EBCLC clinic? I believe this is being answered in the chat um, and we'll also let the chat answer uh, whether it counts as pro bono hours. Okay, many of us are balancing applications and tryouts for a range of opportunities and responsibilities next year. Unfortunately, the timing means applying to one opportunity at the time we don't know another 
uh, means it's hard to commit to accepting if offered a spot. Are we able to decline if needed? Great question. The answer is that if you are offered a slot in a clinic to which you have applied, you do not need to accept it. Applying is not committing to accept. However, if you are offered a spot and you accept it, you may not then choose to withdraw for at least two reasons. One is once we have our acceptances, we tell other students that there is not room for them in our clinics. And so you have essentially taken a spot someone else might want. And second, and most important, we make commitments to cases and clients based on how many students we anticipate having in our clinic. So when students drop after they've accepted, it can really leave the clients shortchanged. So I hope that's clear. If you need any more elaboration, feel free to ask in the breakout sessions. Will there be an opportunity to apply to clinics in the spring for clinics that are only a semester long? Absolutely, we have these info sessions every semester. The majority of clinics do allow people to enroll for a single semester. There is some more typing going on here. If you commit to participating in a clinic for the fall, are you also committing for the spring? This varies by clinic. If it's a year long clinic and you commit to participating in the fall, you're committing to participating in the spring but not so if it's a one semester clinic. For one semester clinics, I'm happy to say we have a high rate of recidivism. We have many people who come back and take clinics two, three, four times. Um, I know in our clinic, as in some others, we've had students three and four times. You can also move to a different clinic, but you can decide that on a semester by semester basis. Will we know whether we have gotten into the clinics before phase two of enrollment? Yes, and if you have not heard from a clinic or all of the clinics within uh, a week or so of your application, feel free to circle back if you really wanna do a clinic and ask where they are in their selection process and let people know if it's time sensitive. Do we need to reapply to a clinic where we have already been accepted if the clinic is only a semester? That's a great question. Yes, for administrative purposes, we would like everybody to submit an application. It is a general policy to do our best to accept returning students. I don't wanna make a, a broad statement across all the clinics, but please put in an application if you wanna continue in a clinic you've already been in and also follow up with your instructors individually to just get a sense of their policy as to returning students. If you're interested in multiple clinics, are you penalized if you pick one over the other and then you wanna reapply for the one you uh, rejected at a later date? Absolutely not. As I said, we really hope that you will uh, be excited by the richness of the clinical opportunities here. Nobody will get their feelings hurt if you decline a clinic and then circle back and say, that really sounds great to me now. And there are so many ways to think about doing more than one clinic. For example, you might say, I'd like to do a semester working in a direct legal services setting. And then I'd like to do a semester working on systemic issues. Or you might say, I'd like to have one semester working on criminal legal issues and another working on civil issues or I would like to work in this particular subject area and then work in that particular subject area because my interests span the two. There's so many reasons to do more than one clinic. And then I believe some of the other questions here, I'm just quickly scanning, seem to be very clinic specific. So I hope you will join the breakout sessions or follow up with friends who do or with the clinic staff to get those questions answered. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think, I think we're pretty good. If you have any questions that have not been answered and don't get answered in the next few minutes or don't get answered in the breakout session, please feel free to circle back to me or to any of the other uh, friendly clinic faces you, you see on this call, and we will do our best to help you. We're so excited by your interest in the clinics and we look forward to seeing you in the breakouts. Thank you.